Gita. We've had his uh, first uh, talk uh, sometimes, I think, in January. Or was it February? I can't remember. No, it's April. Exactly, so exactly. we missed, uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah. some uh, couple of months, but we'll make up uh, uh, soon. So welcome, uh, Swamiji, and thank you for uh, being with us uh, today. We are looking forward to uh, your talk today, and uh, I understand uh, uh, you will be uh, talking today on the second chapter of uh, Bhagavad Gita. Uh, I think those who have uh, joined for the first time, uh, a very brief introduction uh, to uh, Swami Mitrananda ji. Uh, he is uh, uh, the uh, spiritual mentor of uh, the Chinmaya Mission, and he is the director of uh, All India Chinmaya uh, Youth uh, Kendra, and uh, he has uh, spearheaded uh, several of uh, uh, their projects, youth projects, and uh, he has contributed to the nation building by training many youth uh, in the you know, message of uh, Gita and making them uh, better human beings who are today contributing to the society. Uh, we had uh, arranged this uh, lecture series with a view to not only understand the uh, message of uh, Gita, try and understand the message of Gita, but also to uh, make sense of uh, this very uh, conflictual world that we are living in. Uh, how do we deal with this uh, world, both uh, in our personal capacities, also as members of uh, the society, uh, as uh, members of, as citizens of uh, India, as uh, a members of this great civilization. Uh, we don't fully, uh, today's generation uh, do not, does not have a, uh, I think, a familiarity with the uh, great uh, text that Gita is. Uh, yet everybody, of course, uh, knows about it. But uh, as Swamiji was uh, telling in his last lecture, that uh, whenever we uh, feel confused, uh, unsure of ourselves, uh, we should turn to the Gita, but also turn to uh, the a spiritual guru uh, who can uh, uh, remove those confusions which uh, naturally occur to uh, all of us. And in the first uh, chapter of uh, uh, Gita, uh, which is about uh, Arjuna's Vishad, and uh, Swamiji had uh, uh, dwelt upon it uh, at length in that chapter, uh, what was the uh, state of mind of Arjuna and uh, how uh, uh, he, how Krishna uh, motivated him to pasya, pasya the message, see for himself and uh, understand what his responsibilities and duties are uh, while following the uh, dharma. And uh, Swamiji also uh, looked at the dharma and satya and sometimes the contradictions that uh, arise between the dharma and uh, satya and what should we do if uh, a conflict like that uh, occurs but of course this is just the beginning of the uh, discourse uh, which swamiji is going to give us so, uh, and going to take us through the various chapters of the gita and uh, there are uh, many the vishad arjuna's vishada is our own vishada so we need to uh, understand how to deal with this uh, world. And as the Swamiji was telling us uh, last time, that our education system, our schools, do not really prepare us uh, how to deal with this uh, world. And Swamiji, in the last uh, few months, major developments have taken place uh, in the international relations. Uh, there is a war which is going on uh, in Europe right now. And uh, the conflict turning into a global conflict uh, that is uh, no longer a, a remote uh, possibility. We don't know what will happen. So we are in a, a state of deep uh, uncertainty at this point of time. And uh, I think uh, there is uh, a need to make sense of uh, what is going on. So from the geopolitics point of view, from the political point of view, which is what also where we want to use the message of Gita for our own understanding, I think your uh, uh, lecture 
uh, will be very important. So uh, thank you very much. And I will, uh, want to welcome uh, all others who have also joined us today. And uh, we uh, now I hand over the floor to Swamiji. And uh, we will have a question and answer session after Swamiji's uh, lecture. So Swamiji, thank you very much for being with us. Once again, a warm welcome and over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar. <clears throat> Samastha Janakalyane Naratham Karunamayam Namami Chanmayam Devam Sadgurum Brahmavitvaram. Am I audible? Clear? Thank you. The first chapter is called Arjuna Vishada Yoga means the chapter deals about a person who gets into despondency, who feels dejected in life, who finds oneself helpless in life. This is what the word Vishada means, helpless, depressed, despondent. So Arjuna landed up into this helplessness. And we can all see that happening to us too. Every now and then we slip into a kind of a state where we are helpless, sometimes absolutely frustrated, not knowing what to do. That state is called Arjuna Stiti, the condition in which Arjuna landed into. That's the, that is what it is. So this book, Gita, guides a person who finds life to be slightly difficult, finds life to be, you know, finds himself or herself helpless in life, or wandering without knowing in which direction to go, to those people, the book appeals, and it is a science of human evolution. When I go through the Gita, what happens to me? If a person goes through the Gita, the person evolves from human to divine, from change to changeless, from mortality to immortal. So what do, what do I gain from this? Eventually, there are immediate benefits on the Gita. It can help us to raise our confidence. It can help us to lift ourselves. It can help us to face life better. It can make us stay cheerful. Various Immediate benefits are there through the Gita, but the final benefit would be it would make the human evolve to divine. And that is the real success in life. Born human, dying as human is not success. Born human, die divine. By the time the death has come, one has evolved to divine. That is success. So eventual success, if we have to see how far we move towards divinity is very important. So in the first verse of the Gita, which we discussed last time, I'm just taking one or two minutes to recall. The very first words where it says, Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre, Samaveda Yuyutsavaha. Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre, with these two words, the message of Gita is there. Kshetra field. Dharma, duty, responsibilities. Kshetram, Kshetram, Dharmam, Kuru. Field to field, perform your responsibilities. What a simple message. Field to field, perform your responsibilities. We have different fields. Like what? Each person has different roles. The woman can be a mother, a sister, a wife, an entrepreneur, friend. You see, one person has different roles. So in different fields, we have to put our responsibility. We have to perform our responsibility. So in every field, perform your responsibility. In every role we play, perform our responsibilities well. And how should I perform? With what kind of a mind I should perform? 
how should i respond to the reactions or the actions or the consequences of my performance is all what the gita talks about that way it makes us live happily and it will that way when we perform our full potential gets into performance our full potential comes we live life to our full potential so this was what we just discussed little in the first chapter and the confident arjuna comes to the battlefield and his confidence starts dwindling as his confidence starts dwindling he looks at arjuna i mean looks at krishna and calls krishna achyuta please remember this name we discussed it last time achyuta means one who has not fallen let's not fall down from our mental state of happiness let's not fall down from our balance of mind let's not fall down from uh, calm mind to frustration let's not fall if we keep falling we are chuta when we don't fall we are achuta that's why arjuna calls krishna hey achuta hey krishna you are staying there in the state of mind i have already fallen guide me and then he gives a various uh, excuses not to fight the war because arjuna had confusions he had misplaced compassion and he was not sure whether to fight the war or not to fight the war whether to attack the enemy or not to attack the enemy and krishna told him hey arjuna go see who is there pashya and arjuna saw through the eyes of attachment which all of us do most of the time we see through our selfish eyes we see through the eyes of attachment and that colors the perception completely if only we can get the attachment out if only to get the attachment out we should first get selfishness out dropping attachment is very hard but slowly if we can become selfless attachment will drop the more selfish we are the more attached we would be so to get out and actually really speaking the distance between us and god the distance between us and divine is the selfishness which we have what is the distance between a person and god it depends upon how much selfish that person is if the selfishness can be reduced swartha if swartha can be reduced distance between human and god becomes less the individual and god becomes less it is the distance is nothing but selfishness and when there is lot of selfishness there naturally we are going to be attached and when there is attachment uh, to a very large extent deeply attached then helplessness comes because you want to protect your object of attachment guard it have it for yourself insecurity comes and sometimes dharma goes away that is what happened to dhritarashtra the blind king was so attached to duryodhana and to also the throne he did not want to give up so anything which came he was ready to compromise dharma for his throne and for his son deep attachment which took him away from dharma and that is the cause all this happened so we need to understand that we have to grow out of attachment and then our path becomes easy so second chapter onwards which we are now going to discuss will and particularly this particular chapter chapter 2 which is called sankhya yoga this chapter is the gist of the bhagavad gita if we learn study second chapter well then the rest of the chapters are easy because the rest of the chapters are the themes discussed in the second chapter be it karma yoga be it bhakti yoga be it jnana yoga all the paths are discussed in the second chapter 2 and uh, the rest of the chapters are nothing but expansion of the themes discussed in the second chapter that's why this chapter is very important to all the listeners so obviously lack of time we are not going to cover words by words we will try and see we'll do it in two parts this today and again another day 
to cover the second chapter because it's a huge chapter with 72 verses. But uh, to all the listeners, one thing I would like to tell you on this chapter, focus. Before we meet next time, I would suggest to you that chapter two, each verse, um, read it for three, four times. Not just once. Read the verse, understand the meaning, read the commentary, whichever book you're following, for three, four times each verse. If you are thorough with second chapter, I think you have a very good base for Bhagavad Gita. So how does the second chapter begin? We discussed earlier also, and now also I just told you, in the battlefield, Arjuna is confused and dejected and he is helpless. So that helplessness is what is being described in the first words. Sanjaya Uvacha, the reporter is telling the Rudrashtra, Sanjaya is telling, Tam tatam kripaya vishtam ashnu purna kulekshanam vishidantam idam vakyam uvacha madhusudana. Hey Krishna, hey Madhusudana, another name for Krishna, he says, hey Madhusudana, Krishna spoke the following words. Madhusudana spoke the following words, Krishna spoke the following words, Uvacha Madhusudana, to whom? Tam tata kripaya vishtam. To that person who is sitting there, unable to cry with a bewildered look, Eyes full of water, but tears are not coming down. Ashnupurna Kulekshanam. Eyes full of water. Tearless, but crying. That kind of a state where he is absolutely helpless. Vishidantam tam idam vakyam. To that Arjuna, Krishna said something. Remember, in the entire first chapter, we saw only one word from Krishna, Pashya. And here Krishna begins to that bewildered, lost, despondent Arjuna. Krishna spoke the following words Madhusudana. He says here, Sri Bhagavan Vacha Kutastva Kashmalamidam Vishame Samupastitam Anarya Jushtam Aswargyam Akirti Karma Arjuna. Very, very powerful words. What does Krishna say here? Kutastva Kashmalamitam. When Arjuna gave a series of lectures, series of excuses, saying why he should not fight and sat there almost crying to that helpless person, Krishna says, Kutastva Kashmalamitam. Vishame Samupastitam. Kutastva. The word kuta means when. So Arjuna got lost and he's sitting there and Krishna is asking him, when, when did this condition come upon you? You, the brave warrior, you, that uh, dreaded hero, Parantapa, you are that, O oh Arjuna. How did you land up into this? How did that Arjuna become this Arjuna. How did you become so helpless in life? So he's saying, Kutastva, Kutastva, when did this come to you? When did this perilous condition come to you, O Arjuna? Now, I have seen many people explaining this first word of Krishna, Kutaha. When? When? When did this happen? And some of the commentators have explained it so beautifully. They say, the word when has to be understood much deeper, not just in, with reference to Arjuna, even beyond. When did you and I, the divine, suddenly felt we are humans? When did you and I, the Atma, become so helpless as a jiva? When did you and I become this? I'll narrate an incident. This was somewhere in, in the year 1988. 
uh, Swami Chinmayananji was taking class on uh, Kato Upanishad and he was doing this lecture in Tamil Nadu in uh, Coimbatore in open air and morning class this was on Kato Upanishad and one particular day the audience were so tuned and the verse was so important he did not stop on time. Generally, he has a lecture which will end in the morning. And that being a camp, and the campus are staying, it's a residential camp, he did not stop and he extended it because the thought was important and he felt he should convey it. So he extended the lecture and it was getting hot. The sun was there and it was getting hot. So one of the devotees felt that there is too much sun on his face hitting him straight. She wanted to go open an umbrella and wait. Now that doesn't look good when you're talking. Imagine someone standing there with an umbrella. Doesn't happen on a Gita lecture or on an Upanishad. So he, said, he told her, just keep it, keep it, don't, don't, don't disturb. And uh, then he said something so beautiful. At that very moment he said, no, you sit down, let me finish the thing. A piece of cloud covered the sun. It was not so hot. Then he made a remark, which I want all of you to understand. He said, now he's talking from the highest standpoint, discussing Upanishad. He said, pointing to himself here, Antar Jyoti, the light within. He said, it is this light which makes that shine towards the sun. It is this light which makes that shine. Now please think. It is this light which is making that shine. Now that is the truth for you and me, not just for him. It is we who empower everything. It is the Chaitanya, the rest is matter. When did you, Arjuna, allowed matter to dominate you? When? When did you allow matter to dominate you? It is the spirit which should dominate matter. Spirit is eternal. So this body is limited. So Krishna's question, when? When did we allow ourselves to become insignificant? On the real nature, it is this light which makes that shine. That we are. You and I are divine. When Vivekananji came up, what did he speak to us? He said, proclaim the divine in you. Proclaim the God in you. This is what Vivekananda's message. You are that divine, proclaim that. But we keep forgetting that. We keep forgetting we are divine. And we keep thinking we are this limited being. Living here as a limited being. Facing limitation. So the question when is very important. When did we lose contact with the divine? When did we forget? We forgot we are divine and thought we are human. When? Kutastva. When did this happen to all of us? And to Arjuna particularly in the Gita. Hey Arjuna, the courageous Mahavir, the great warrior. Parantapa, when did you become helpless? When did this come to you? How did you land into something like this? Kutastva Kashmalam, perilous state. Kashmalam, this kind of a dejection. How did you land into this uh, Kashmalam? Malam, dirt. Kashmalam, into this perilous condition. Kutastva Kashmalam, idam. And how does that, he says, the next line is, Vishame Samupastitam. In the in a most inappropriate time, how did you get into this? And Anarya Jushtam Aswargyam Akirti Karmarjuna. This doesn't defeat the behavior of being a gentleman. Aryan here means not somebody came from Central Asia, that isn't the truth. The people who lived here are, are, the gentleman is called Aryan. 
and it's not that you know the, the word here is important the gita was existing much before the central from central asia people turned up you say the cent from central asia people turned up to bharat 1500 bce bhagavad gita existed 5000 before so here we were called aryans and what is the meaning of the word aryan gentleman arya so this is not befitting the behavior of a gentleman this is not the way a person behaves anarya jishtam aswargyam swarga also you will not get this behavior of yours suddenly withdrawing from the battle battlefield trying to run away escape from the responsibility is not gentleman behavior and that kind of an escape attitude with which you want to run away hey arjuna that will not get you heavens aswargya swarga is also not possible for you akirti disgusting arjuna trying to escape from your responsibilities is disgrace akirti see the words he used in the whole of first chapter krishna was listening 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 did not utter a word and arjuna went one excuse after another after a streak of excuses arjuna could not say anything he kept quiet and krishna comes out literally lashes arjuna he says kutastva kashmalam idam vishame samupastitam anarya jushtam aswargyam akirti karma arjuna this action of you withdrawing doesn't befit you arjuna it doesn't befit you it is disgusting it is not a gentleman behavior and it will not get you even heaven you will lose this state of mind with which you will lose everything and then he says what he should do klaibyam in the very next words he says klaibyam masma gamah partha hey partha hey arjuna get the state of this klaibyam you are behaving very unmanly take the state out klaibyam sma gamah partha naitatva upapadyate this does not befit you arjuna shand zave and this line is very important shudram hridaya daurbalyam tyaktva uttishta parantapa this line is beautiful those who have a book i'm talking about the third verse of the second chapter which says shudram quickly quickly hridaya daurbalyam this faint heartedness what you have the weakness which you feel in you this helplessness which you feel in you quickly throw it out tyaktva chuck that out hey arjuna this faint heartedness chuck it out immediately shudram quickly chuck it out tyaktva chuck it out uttishta get up parantapa parantapa dreaded hero scorcher of enemies and that is the real arjuna the real arjuna is that when he comes everybody was scared because he was number one in his field the most powerful archer most successful archer and that are that is you and how did you land up into this this doesn't befit you arjuna throw this out immediately now this line we should keep this in mind shudram hridaya daurbalyam tyaktva uttishta parantapa if nothing just remember this last line tyaktva uttishta parantapa like last time we discussed remember achyuta and pashya those are the two words here tyaktva uttishta chak this out uttishta rise up hey parantapa hey arjuna we have to keep this in mind whenever we let ourselves into a condition immediately in, into a condition of helplessness immediately our first goal should be i should jump out of this helplessness i should immediately get out of this helplessness how do i get out of this helplessness 
How do I do it? I have landed up into helplessness. How do I do it? Is there somebody who can pull me out? Those helps will not be forever. Somebody can pull you out from a one situation. Another person can pull you out from another situation. But we may keep landing up in situations again and again. So how should I do it? I should work on my strength. And for those who read Swami Vivekananda, you will understand how from page to page you can find him talking about strength. Strength. This strength we need to have. And those who have strength, they live life. Those who do not have the strength within, they survive or exist. The difference is only that. Those who have strength, they live life. Those who do not have strength, survive. So how do I develop the strength so that I can throw all this helplessness and be free? How do I develop the strength? It is your spirituality is a great, great tool. Because it talks about spirit. It talks about us. So one simple exercise, there are many exercises to do. One simple exercise I would tell you now, every day do japa. For you to become strong, every day do japa. Spend some time doing japa. On what should I do japa? The Ishta Devata, what you have at home, your Kula Devata, the family deity, that which you have been worshipping from childhood, in that you can choose a deity and choose a mantra on that deity, on that mantra do Japa. Or the Lord which inspires you. Some could be inspired by Krishna, some could be by Ram, some could be by uh, um, Mother Goddess Kali, some could be by Goddess Saraswati, or some can be inspired by Vishnu. Whichever you take, in that name of the Lord, take, I mean, take one name of that Lord and make it your mantra. Do mantra daily. Chant mantra daily. Meaning, do japa daily. Why? Now, I have been talking to you maybe, what, 25 minutes? Your mind was always with me? When I was talking? Totally? Or it was going everywhere? And now and then coming? Most of the time, our body is in one place, mind goes somewhere. Earlier, when we had the live discussion, at least you can see people's eyes. And then you know the person is here or gone. Because eyes will show. Eyes are the index of the mind. Whether you are there or not, your eyes will show. The spark will be seen. Today I am staring at a, screen, at a screen. And you are not sure whether people are there listening. And even if they are listening, are they doing 20 other things and listening? You never know. But the point, what I want to tell you is, is your mind where you are? 25 minutes to 30 minutes I must be talking now. Was the mind here totally? Or it went all over and now and then coming here? Think. Most of the time, the body is in one place. Mind is elsewhere. This is our problem. Body is here, yeah, mind is elsewhere. What do we do? Bring the mind to the place where the body is. Let the mind and body be aligned together. Mind, body, alignment. Mind, body, alignment. MBA. So just remember this word MBA. Mind body alignment. Mind body alignment. 
what happens when my mind body are aligned when my mind and body are aligned my thoughts don't wander today when your mind is wandering everywhere imagine how much of thoughts are going so much of thoughts goes out of us regularly we get exhausted too much of thought flow people like wayne dyer etc have said that almost 60000 thoughts run in our head every day what a thought factory factory keeps producing thoughts how much 60000 what a production and every thought which comes drains our energy we get mentally dissipated tired so too many thoughts flowing mentally we get exhausted when we do japa we align the mind and body together how you are taking the name of the lord in your mind shri ram jai ram jai jai ram in the mind shri ram jai ram jai jai ram shri ram jai ram jai jai ram in the mind and the beats move in the body the japa mala keeps moving in the hand and the mind keeps taking the name of the lord the body and the mind is aligned this practice of aligning the mind and body once you start doing it in japa slowly extend it to other fields of your life like what when you are brushing your teeth let the mind body be aligned there when you are drinking a cup of coffee let it be there every small action what you do bring the mind and body together but start it with japa that way when the mind and body are aligned thought dissipation is not there when thoughts are not dissipating away the energy which drives through those thoughts are con- are preserved conserved for every thought please remember mental energy is gone too many thoughts too much of mental energy is gone lesser thoughts more mental energy is retained this is called bala strength inner strength those who avoid thought dissipation they will be mentally strong so aligning the mind body is very important japa helps us to do it that gives us the strength tyaktva utishta parantapa then when you stand up you stand up with strength so this faint heartedness in us should go that comes to us because we feel we are weak and we keep forgetting who we are it is this light which makes that shine we cannot forget we should remember it is this which makes everything enlivened i am the center i am the self forgetting that we would naturally become helpless so krishna tells arjuna chuck this helplessness chuck this attitude of yours which is a very pessimistic negative attitude kashmalam absolutely negative absolutely pessimistic chuck this out clipium and this is not even manly throw it away coward you are clipium mas magama partha naitatvai upapadyate look at the word he says arjuna this does not befit you arjuna so we also should keep in mind this action does it show the dignity of a human being does it fit in into the matrix of a decent behavior once we become aware of it we will avoid so he says this doesn't fit you arjuna naitatvai upapadyate shudram hridaya daurbalyam chuck this out arjuna quickly uttishta parantapa he parantapa get up now imagine Arjuna spoke one whole chapter the entire first chapter of the Gita Arjuna went on lamenting 
one verse after another, one verse after another, one excuse after another, was full of lamentation. Vyasa named that chapter Vishada Yoga. Arjuna's lamentation. Lamenting, lamenting, lamenting. Grieved, despondent Arjuna. After someone pouring out so much of their uh, vent, venting out so much of their low self-esteem, helplessness, and logically giving excuses to hide that. Krishna gave, I mean Arjuna gave excuses. This disorder will be in the social society. This will be changed. That Therefore, we should avoid war. He was giving different reasons. Krishna kept quiet throughout. And then literally two verses, he almost slapped Arjuna. Straight on the face. Kutastva kashmalam. Is this decent behavior? Malam? Dirt? Filth? This attitude of yours is filthy, Arjuna. Kashmalam. Throw it out. It can't get you heavens. It is not a gentleman behavior. Nor is it uh, um, uh, disgusting. It is disgraceful, Arjuna. Chuck this out. Arjuna never expected this from Krishna. What Arjuna thought, what Arjuna thought was, Krishna will also sit there and say, Oh, Arjuna, yes, life has been really hard on you, Arjuna. Life has been very, very bad. And what has happened is not fair. I do understand. He thought he'd give him a tissue paper to wipe his tears or put his head on his shoulder. And this is what Arjuna was expecting, saying, I want my sympathy from you. I am expecting sympathy from you. On the other hand, Krishna is looking at him because he saw through Arjuna and he said, Are you a man? How, how did you become such a coward? This doesn't befit you at all. Get up, Arjuna. Naturally, when this kind of a lashing happened, it shook Arjuna, saying, Oh, this man saw through me. I was putting various masks, various defenses to hide my weakness. But his he penetrated everything and he slapped me straight. One last attempt Arjuna makes. One last attempt. Putting up his last, and that's naturally his fear also. So he puts it up saying, Katham Bhishma Maham Sankhe Dronam Cha Madhusudana Hey Krishna, you have said all these things, you called me covered, you told me all these things, I agree, okay. But you tell me how to kill. Katham Bhishma Maham Sankhe Did you ever think how I can kill Bhishma? Dronam Cha and also Drona. How do you think I can do that? Hey Krishna, please tell me. How do you think I can do? Because these are his objects of deep attachment and reverence. Arjuna's attachment and reverence? Bhishma. Bhishma and Arjuna had a special relationship. Bhishma's favorite grandson Arjuna. Arjuna's favorite, I mean, Drona's favorite student, Arjuna. Drona made sure that Arjuna remains on top. He was his favorite. Things which he did not teach anyone else, including his son, he has taught Arjuna. Arjuna was his favorite, Drona's favorite. And these two are on the enemy side. So here he is saying, Katham, Krishna, tell me, Krishna. Katham Bhishma Maham Sankhe Dronancha Madhusudana Hey Madhusudana, this Bhishma and Drona, tell me how do I kill them? They are to be, he should be he. By arrows you are expecting me that I'll take an arrow and shoot them? They are to be worshipped, Pujar. They are, they are the people to be worshipped and you are telling me take arrows and shoot. Now, my question here for you to think, Arjuna did not know this before he came to the war. Arjuna did not know as a warrior, he did not know what will happen in war field. Arjuna did not know about this when both the parties were negotiating for peace. He knew it. War means disaster. He knew everything. 
but somewhere he panicked and now he puts the last defense of Bhishma and Arjuna. How do you expect me to do? And they are ready to do. Isn't it? Did Bhishma have the doubt? How do I kill my favorite? Drona had nothing. He said, come on, destiny has brought us to war. You believe in something, I believe in something. Now we here you are. We have to fight and this is war. We'll go. They are very clear. This confusion is in Arjuna said. So Krishna looked at him, did not say a word. At this point, the Bhagavad Gita begins. It is here. So far, what I told you is the background. It is here the Gita begins. In verse uh, 7, second chapter, Karpanya dosho pahata swabhavaha prichami tvam dharma sammuda chetaha Arjuna is telling Karpanya dosho pahata swabhavaha Hey Krishna, this pain what I am going through, I am not able to handle. This what I am going through, I am not able to do it, deal with it anymore by myself. Karpanya dosho pahata swabhavaha It is so hurting. And it has literally pulls me down. Prichami tvam dharma sammuda chetaha. I am asking you. Hey Arjuna, hey Krishna, I am asking you for guidance. Prichami tvam dharma sammuda chetaha. My head is confused and right now. I am lost totally. Beaten out completely. I don't have any strength. Fatigued absolutely mentally, physically. I'm out. I do not know. My head is also confused. I surrender to you now. In this verse, Arjuna surrenders. He says, Shishya steham shadimam tvam prapannam. Hey Krishna, I tried myself. I am not able to handle it. I tried sorting it out. I tried putting up a facade. I tried putting up a different masks. I tried, but you penetrated everything. I am confused. I am helpless. I am lost. You please guide me. Shishya steham shadimam tvam prapannam. Here I surrender to you, O Krishna. I could not do this anymore. I surrender to you now. Krishna also was waiting. And this is the most beautiful aspect of Hindu civilization. The parampara of knowledge being handed over. And nobody wants to give this knowledge if the student is not ready. So Krishna waited. He saw what Arjuna is. And he finally made Arjuna figure out for himself. Right now I am helpless. My head is confused. Please guide me out of this. He becomes a student, surrenders. Shishya steham. Aham, I am your shishya, your student. Now you guide me. Upanishad is also a dialogue between teacher and student. So here the teacher and student dialogue begins. Arjuna surrenders. When this happens, when all this was happening, Sanjaya, remember, first chapter I told you, Sanjaya is reporting to Dhridharashtra what is happening in the battlefield. Sanjaya is reporting to Dhridharashtra and Dhridharashtra was beaming with laughter, smiling, was very happy. When Sanjaya reported that Arjuna has lost, he is dejected, he is in despondent, he has dropped his bow and arrow and he is standing there helpless. Arjuna is still dissipated himself totally, finished, demolished totally. And that is the position of Arjuna, helpless, threw away the bow and arrow. Weird. Dhridharashtra was happy. Ah, the plan worked because he had this plan. Earlier, much before the war could begin, when the peace talks were happening, from the Kaurava side, Sanjaya was sent to go and speak to the Pandavas. And from the Pandavas side, Krishna came to Kauravas to negotiate peace. So, Dhridharashtra tells Sanjaya, if you go and negotiate peace, talk, 
see if they accept our terms. If they don't accept our terms, if war is unavoidable, take Arjuna alone and talk to him all this. So Sanjaya takes Arjuna away and speaks, what is the use of this war? Your brothers, they are, they are greedy, this, that. Everything what he was saying, verbatim, ideas are inserted into Arjuna. Inception. Dhridharashtra through Sanjaya incepted certain ideas into Arjuna like a psychological time bomb. It was ticking, ticking, ticking and it blasted off in Kurukshetra by which Arjuna drops the bow and everything and he says, I'm done, over, this war is not for me anymore. So Dhridharashtra was happy, the blind man. On hearing this, he was happy saying, ah, our plan worked. We have at least demolished one guy completely before he could start. And he was so sure that the Pandavas have no chance in winning without Arjuna. Though, Bhima killed 100 Kauravas. But the people who were protecting the Kauravas, they were invincible. Like Bhishma, Drona, Jayadratha, Karna. These are people who had divine weapons. Karna had an armor. Bhishma had a vow when he can die only when he wants. Drona never lost a war. Jayadratha had a boon. Whoever kills him, that guy will die first. These are the people who are there protecting that hundred Kauravas. So you have to first eliminate them for the hundred Kauravas to go. Please remember. So to eliminate them, Krishna, could, I mean Arjuna only can do it. And once they are removed, Bhima had his way. So Dhridharashtra was so sure. If Arjuna is demolished psychologically, Pandavas have no chance. He thought he won the war without an arrow being shot. This is the feeling Dhridharashtra had. That, ha, I think it all worked. Now we got the war in our hands, even without an arrow being shot. That is the kind of a smile Dhridharashtra must have expressed. And Sanjaya was watching what is happening there. And he was also watching what was happening with the Dhridharashtra. And Sanjaya says here, and this is also one of the most lovely verses. Verse 10 of chapter 2. Sanjaya Vacha, where he says, Tam Vacha Rishi Kesha. Krishna Rishi Kesha, Tam Vacha, spoke. This is how Krishna spoke. To whom? To that Arjuna, who has dropped bow and arrow. Tushni Baba has settled down into complete helplessness. To him, Krishna spoke. And he says, when Krishna spoke, Prahasaniva Bharata. Now this line is important. Please remember this line. Prahasaniva Bharata. Bharata here is Dhridharashtra. Hey Dhridharashtra, Krishna is smiling. In Arjuna's collapse, in Arjuna mentally demolished. Your plan worked because Sanjay was part of it. Arjuna is demolished. Pandavas hardly have any chance. And Krishna wants the Pandavas to win. And when Arjuna, his main guy, has gone, psychologically confused, Krishna is still smiling. Achyuta. Never fallen down. Look, at this condition in a war, Krishna did not lose his smile. What is the state of mind? What must be the balance of mind? Sudden turn of events. The man you depend upon, who can deliver for you, is now running away from battlefield. The main team player says, I am done. Sorry, boss, I can't do it. Your main person, 
whom you depended so much, thinking this guy will deliver, and that guy walks out. Is that not a betrayal of trust? That suddenly somebody went down. You thought this guy can do something to you, and he went off. And Krishna's purpose is the Mahabharata war was to establish Dharma. And here is a warrior who has to stand for Dharma, he is now backing out. Chickened out. You and I would have thrown our mind, blown our mind off, saying, What the hell did you think? I came here to waste my time. You fellows don't deserve, you don't have a kingdom, get lost. Something we would have screamed. Krishna didn't do all that. He looked at Arjuna and he was smiling. Oh, Arjuna, this is where it is. And he was smart enough to understand that this is an inception which has gone in his head. So he was smiling. Sanjaya is alerting Dhritarashtra. Wait, sir, everything is not over. This one man smiling is what is making me alert. This person is smiling. In a condition like this, Krishna was smiling. 38 lakh soldiers in the battlefield. Imagine the numbers who have assembled in Kurukshetra. The Akshoyanis of the Pandavas and the Kauravas put together. What must be the mood of that war? I, extreme uncertainties. The moment you go there, you, don't, you are not sure when you are going to come back. You are not sure the people whom you are loving, whether they will come back, not sure. War is naturally absolute uncertainties and it is life and blood. In that situation, when your main player drops off also, Arjuna went off, but Krishna did not lose his mind. That word is very important. It only shows what is Krishna's state of mind, which Sanjaya noticed and says, Krishna is smiling. Prahasaniva Bharata, hey, Dhradrashtra Bharata, this guy is smiling. So that means it is not over. Senayor, Ubayor, Madhye, Vishidantam. To that dejected Arjuna, Krishna spoke. From here, actually, the philosophy begins. Bhagavad Gita. Those who follow Shankara, Adi Shankara, Shankara lived for 32 years, short life, and uh, traveled across the length and breadth of the country. When it came to writing commentary on the Gita, Shankara gave a summary of the first chapter and up to this verse. Did not write commentary verse by verse up to this. He just gave a general summary. Shankara writes commentary only from the 11th verse of the second chapter. Shankara Basha is not there on the first chapter and the 10 verses. Only verse by verse. Detailed summary. Uh, commentary is not there. One general summary he gives and begins his commentary from the 11th verse of the second chapter. Must be lack of time. Why so much? Shankara must have felt. These are cause and effect. People will understand. Actual philosophy begins here. So he did not go into that aspect how Arjuna dejected. He just summarizes it. But comes into detail explanation from this verse till the end of 18 chapters. Verse by verse Shankara writes commentary. But till this verse there was only summary. So you can understand, according to Shankara, the Gita begins here. Arjuna collapsing, Arjuna surrendering, uh, Dhridrashtra being happy, all that is over. Now the philosophy begins. This verse is one of those most fascinating verses. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Asochyan Anvasochastvam Pragna Vadanscha Basha say, Gata soon, a Gata soon chap, Nanu Sochanti Pandita. Asocha, Nanva Sochastvam. Bhagavan Vacha, Krishna speaking. Krishna saying here, Asocha, Nanva Sochastvam. 
asochan anosochasta he arjuna you are grieving you are worrying for things which should not be worried asochan anosochasta that which doesn't deserve to be worried you are worried about it asochan anosochasta you are grieving for those who should not be grieved you are grieving on that which should not be grieved gatasun agatasun cha you are speaking of people in this earth they come and go gatasun cha so he says gatasun agatasun cha they come and go do not grieve for the dead or alive arjuna there is no point getting yourself buried worked up on all this you are sounding like a wise man pandita ha you are sounding like a wise man but your words don't indicate that sorry yeah you are sounding like a wise man but your words do not indicate that so do not you are grieving for those who should not be grieved at the same time bhasha se pragna vadanscha you are talking words of a wise man panditaha but please understand nanu sochanti panditaha gatasun agatasun a wise man is not worried about the living or the dead how is this verse sound hey arjuna you are grieving for that which should not be grieved you are using the words of wise men but please understand wise men do not grieve for the living or the dead think i want you to think from which standpoint is krishna addressing arjuna from which standpoint arjuna had a list of problems he went and told all this to krishna krishna slapped him up and saying nothing doing get it and when he surrenders arjuna krishna takes up and krishna takes up from this standpoint wise man is not one who grieves for the living or the dead what does that mean looks very hard to accept is it wisdom is that that you don't even worry about the living or the dead for those who are dead and gone you are not worried or those who are living you are not worried what happens how can someone be like that when you play a game of chess you know actual chess when you have a chess board coins you play someone is a pawn someone is a rook a horse an elephant a queen king different um uh, coins you have and then you play a game of chess end of the game what happens when the game is over somebody wins what happens the king and the pawn both go back to the same box correct think end of it what happens when the game is over the king and the pawn where are they put into the same box from that box they come play a different role and go back to the same box the king and the pawn go back to the same box where do you think you and i come from where do you think you and i come from i'm not asking your residential address where do you think you and i come from to understand this verse i'll narrate one incident 
which happened between Shankara and one of his disciples, Hastamalaka. Hastamalaka was living in the southern India. Shankara was traveling that side. And uh, the members of uh, Astamalaka's family and the people living in his neighborhood all thought Astamalaka is a mentally unstable person, challenged, retard, and he was living there that way. So he won't speak to anybody. Go spend time alone, laugh, come, just be like that, not even talking to anybody. So they all felt that he's mentally challenged, a retard, and uh, the parents bring him to Shankara and saying, bless this child. Shankara looks at Hasta Malaka, must be 14 year old, no? teenager. He looks at Hasta Malaka, smiles. Uh -huh. And Astamalaka is quiet looking at Shankara. Shankara then asks Astamalaka, Kim Namate Uta Agatosi. What's your name and from where have you come? Very simple question, isn't it? Anybody we meet, we answer. This is the question we ask. What's your name? Where are you from? Kim Namate. From where have you come? When Shankara asks that question, people naturally around Shankara puzzled and said, no, no, he can't speak. He's dumb. From childhood, he never uttered any word. Shankara said, quiet. I'm asking him, now tell. Nasta Malka also was quiet for a while and then he smiled. And he said, Naham Manushe Nachadeva Yakshaha Na Brahmana Kshatriya Vaishya Shudra Na Brahmachari Na Grihi Na Vanastaha Bikshur Na Chaham Nicha Bodha Rupa What an introduction this is. Who are you? From where have you come? Naham Manushya I'm not a human. Not this body you call man, woman, no. Naham Manusha. Nacha Deva Yaksha, not an angel. Or Yaksha Kinnaras. I am not all of them. Then, Na Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. These four castes which you pour, superimpose on me, I am not, I don't belong to any of them. Are you Brahmachari? Grahastha? Na Brahmachari, Na Grahastha. Vanastaha. Bhikshu, no, not even a sannyasi. Then, Nija Bodha Rupaha. I am pure consciousness. Who are you? I am pure consciousness. The entire village was stunned by this guy's reply. We thought he would never speak. And Shankara asked, and this guy replies like this. Because Shankara smiled at him, looked at him and smiled. Shankara could see through saying, this you can pretend in front of others, they can, you can fool them that you are mentally retarded, you can't speak and all that. I can see through you, I know who you are. So delight me with your answers. Tell me who you are. Kim Namade Kuta Agatosi. When Shankara asks that, Astamalaka comes out. Naham Manushe Achateva Yakshaha. Na Brahmana Kshatriya Vaishya Shudra. Na Brahmachari Na Grihi Na Vanastaha. Bhikshu. Nicha Bodha Rupa. I am pure consciousness. This is what we have to understand. When Krishna starts starting here, when he's starting his re regenerating Arjuna, when Krishna's work has begun in bringing back Arjuna, Uttishta Parantapa, that, that work, when it has begun, Krishna is starting from that point. A wise man would not grieve for the living or the dead. In reality, wise man has no worries. Understand? 
wise man has no worries. That is the hallmark of wisdom. How? No worries. From the state of pure consciousness, the absolute self, who dies? The king and the pawn go back to the same place. From unmanifest we have come, we go back to unmanifest. From the divine we came, we go back to divine. Who is dead? Who is alive? One eternal truth. From that standpoint of one eternal truth, the pure consciousness, nothing happens. Will the ocean be disturbed when a wave rises and disappears? Ocean. All, so many waves are coming. From the ocean, these waves are coming, playing around sometime. Sometimes there are bubbles moving here, there. Sometimes could be turbulent. Sometimes could be, you know, like a soft wave, a hard wave. When a wave arises and a wave disappears, what happens to ocean? Nothing, right? Ocean is least bothered. When the disappearance of a wave, nothing happens to the ocean because that is the pure state of consciousness. For us, from that state, any change here would never really matter. Not knowing that this looks real, understanding that there is nothing. If a small bubble is writing a biography, being a victim of the harassment of waves, what would ocean say? A bubble which is trying to float in the ocean is being harassed by the waves and the bubble feels I'm a victim, laments. What would the ocean say? Nothing, right? The ocean and say, the bubble, you are nothing but ocean only, it's me in another form and nothing happens to you. The bust of the bubble, bubble never dies. It has become one with the ocean. When a bubble comes up, nothing has happened to the ocean. It, it, ocean only has expressed as bubble. Same way, one life in you, in me, in the plant, in the bird, in the animal. It is one life. This one life as expressed as many. If one aspect of it disappears, life does not disappear. If bubbles die, ocean does not die. When new waves are born, nothing happens to the ocean. When the waves which are born disappears, ocean stays the same. Same way Brahman, the reality, Atman remains the same. From this standpoint, Krishna begins his education of Arjuna. He doesn't start from the uh, uh, early stages. He straight away goes to the highest stage. Arjuna, you spoke about wise people. It's a borrowed language, actually, not your experience. You uttered the words of a wise man, but let me tell you, a man who is awakened to the truth, the hallmark of such a person is he has no worries. Those who have experienced that truth has no worries. So from that standpoint, Krishna addresses, I would stop here because this verse needs more. This particular verse, what we have discussed, I want you to read thoroughly before we take up further. Because this verse, understanding verse number 11 of the Bhagavad Gita, will be the foundation for other lectures, will be the foundation to understand other uh, chapters. This particular verse is important. Please read the commentary of this. Before we take up QA, I have a question. Anuttama ji, uh, I can send you a scanned commentary of Swami Chanmayananji on this verse. That should be fine. To the group. It to everyone. 
uh, you circulate it to everybody. Sure. So you are, they read a couple of times, and that will create a base in understanding the Gita better. Because Krishna okay. starts from the highest standpoint. Okay. Imagine what he said so beautifully. What is the sign of wisdom? The sign of wisdom is no worries. It's the sign of wisdom. How far are we from it then? Just imagine how far we are from it, from wisdom. If we have gained the right knowledge and we are so alert to look at the world only from that standpoint, there can't be any worry. Worry-free life is what Vedanta offers. The wisdom of the Gita is, if you really catch it, it's a worry-free life. I remember... Before we go into the QA, I remember my guru, Swami Chandananji, gave some work to somebody saying, Please do this job. You know, those days, 1980s, he asked someone to send a telegram. One of his programs got cancelled uh, in, uh, in another country. So he said, Send a telegram to tell them this program, we are not taking it up now. So they need to know, send a telegram. So he met that guy again in the afternoon and he asked him, Hey, morning I told you, send a telegram, have you sent it? Casually, when you meet somebody, you ask, have you sent it? Now this guy thought he was talking to you and me, you know. And he said to, to Gurudev, he said, Swamiji, don't worry, it will be done. Don't worry, it will be done. Gurudev stopped. Chinmayananji stopped, was looking at him for a while and the room went into a kind of a silence. He's not talking, he's just looking at him, smiling and everybody knew there was something he was going to say and the whole place was so quiet still and he was just looking at him, smiling and you can see that twinkle in his eye like saying, ha ha. Then he said, come here. Now we knew there's something. So he said, come here. So this man came closer to him and he said, to him. Then he looks at him and he said, what did you say? Don't worry. It will be done. He says, have you seen me worried? Ever. Have you seen me worried? What a question to ask. Don't worry, Swamiji. It will be done. Huh? Have you seen me worried? I have asked you to send something. I am cross-checking whether you have sent. And you are telling me, don't worry. And he is asking, have you seen me worried? What a question. What a question. How beautiful it will be if this becomes part of our life. At some day we can turn back and say, have you seen me worried? When did you last see me worried? What a question to ask. Today everyone will say one hour ago, half an hour ago, just now. But really that's a question to keep in mind. When did you last see me worried? We ourselves should forget when I was last worried. Imagine if that happens. I can't remember when I was last sad. Ah, what a way of life. Practice of Gita would lead us there. So we have just started the opening verse of the philosophy of the Gita. Till then was the background. The background, what led to Gita, what was happening, a dialogue between Krishna, Arjuna, all that. And this is the beginning of the philosophy. So read this verse, read the commentary. That will create a base to take up further discussion on that. Now we have 10 minutes. We can open up for Q&A. Thank you, Swamiji. Am I audible? Yes, yes you are. Right. I think it was a spellbinding lecture. 
this one hour and 45 minutes, I don't know how 